I breathe through my nose, wear expensive colognes, and I also hate minorities and poor people. Yeah, that's, that's gonna get clipped out of context. Anyways, in recent years, the phenomenon of looks maxing and the obsession with facial features have increasingly influenced online communities. Kareem Shami is a 22-year-old college student based in San Diego who's become the face of this looks maxing trend after posting this video showing his physical transformation between the ages of 17 and 20. Especially within communities a lot of insecure teen boys turn to, or insecure teenagers in general. Looks maxing, the practice of improving one's physical appearance through various means, ranging from skincare routines to cosmetic surgery, has garnered significant attention, and who else is better to discuss physical appearances than the guy who's most well known for wearing a mask? I mean, look at me. Yo, put that bag back on! Now, let me just say this. I'm not saying everyone who is into looks maxing is racist or that it's a negative as a whole. I'm glad the next generation can wear cologne in middle school that isn't Axe body spray and can do a skincare routine without being called gay. This video is simply addressing a sinister pipeline I've been noticing, but a pipe works two ways, and to understand how it flows, we have to understand where it begins. To start this segment off, discussing scientific genetic differences between races isn't inherently racist. A high amount of East Asian people lack body odor genes, black people may have the capacity for more fast twitch fibers for running, and Europeans tend to be on the taller side with bigger frames, yada yada yada. These differences can be useful for measuring medicine doses, accurately measuring BMI, and more. However, race science for the context of this video will focus on subsections of it such as phrenology and physiognomy. So the good news is you may not be ugly, they might just be racist. Or maybe you are ugly. Aww. Historically, race science has sought to categorize and rank human races based on physical characteristics and purported inherent qualities. It even has gone so far as to lead to forced breeding and sterilizations on populaces. Physiognomy theorizes that one's character and moral worth can be discerned from facial features, while phrenology, developed by Franz Joseph Gall, claimed that the shape and size of the skull reflected an individual's intellectual and moral faculties. Phrenology was also used to justify racial hierarchies and discrimination against women. Both of these pseudo-scientific fields have been employed to legitimize and perpetuate social and racial inequalities by framing certain attributes and features as indicative of innate differences among races and ethnicities. These framings have been used to say that women aren't as smart as men because their heads are smaller, that slavery was natural, and that darker skin colors are inherently bad, and also a predictor of crime. And that's how you end up with this. And this. Hakeem actually has a really good video on the history of race and the debunked scientific studies that were performed using these pseudosciences. To bring this back to the modern era, certain online communities and influencers perpetuate the notion that specific facial features are intrinsically linked to racial superiority or inferiority. For instance, discussions might elevate traits typically associated with European ancestry while denigrating features common among other racial or ethnic groups. To bring things back to the modern era, looks maxing embodies a culture fixated on enhancing physical attractiveness, often driven by the belief that one's worth is closely tied to their appearance. While I'm not in the camp that first impressions and looks don't matter at all, it's important to also remember looks are subjective, especially when we get into content like this. The problem with the current culture of looks maxing is similar to my critiques about the far right politicization of the gym. It's come to a point where the looks maxing community in the beauty industry isn't really about self improvement or feeling comfortable in your skin, but rather appeasing others and fitting into the molds that they prescribe. Up until recently, beauty products and modeling tended to cater to European features and lighter skin tones, and representation of other races tended to only be advertised by people. POC ran companies. Here's a fun fact for those who are into fragrances in high fashion. Paco Rabanne and Yves Saint Laurent actually risked their careers by platforming the first black models in fashion. This tunnel vision advertising led to a lot of chemical hair perms, skin bleaching items, and surgeries that are still prevalent to this day. Social media platforms also amplify these standards and promote the solutions to these insecurities in a matter of seconds. Algorithms prioritize content that garners high engagement, often making the fixation on physical attributes worse 
and reinforcing a singular notion of beauty. In a very dystopian way, the beauty industry is a cycle that keeps making money because there will never be a shortage of people that you can convince to hate themselves. The concept of beauty and attraction themselves get turned into a commodity that is then sold to the masses, and those who do not have the money or time to indulge in them are then blocked from ever being seen positively. As a result, discussions about facial aesthetics and attractiveness frequently slip into problematic territory where certain features are deemed more desirable based on racially charged criteria. For example, large or curved noses are seen as ugly and distracting despite many ethnic groups having them. Large lips are stunning and sexy on Kylie Jenner, but will be ridiculed and caricatured on a black person. In my experience perusing through these circles, it's over for you and rope max are used a lot on people who aren't attractive to certain beauty standards, which is a horrible approach to someone who's asking for ways to amplify their features or change up their look. This is especially harmful when these people are being compared to supermodels such as Chico Lachowski, Jordan Barrett, or Bella Hadid, who even speaking outside of race are all literal supermodels and have very defining and sharp features that are only achievable through unreal fasting, dehydration, and other industry methods. Which makes the ridicule and insecurities even worse if you look nothing like these people that looks maxers are worshipping and striving to look like. This futility leads people to the dark parts of the internet that contains things such as racial supremacy and... Once again, I'm not going to deny that looks matter. Some people got the short end of the stick and have to play their cards a little bit harder at the poker table of life. I'm an average looking short guy and growing up was not fun at times. However, I never managed to go down the incel pipeline due to not over obsessing over my shortcomings. Get it? Cause sh short. Anyways, looks matter to an extent, but a lot of these self-proclaimed incels are dudes who fall into the misogynistic and self-hating side of look maxing. Looks maxing and incel dumb go together like Drake in high school parking lots. The obsession with physical appearance and your girlfriend or crush fucking other men, most times who are depicted as black men for some reason, contribute to the same cycle of fear and self-loathing among those who are active in those circles. Incel communities are often characterized by their belief that their lack of romantic or sexual success is a result of inherent flaws in their appearance. Unfortunately for a lot of POC, this leads to self-hatred, idolizing other races' features, and an inherent belief that they are unlovable and shunned. With the rise of the far right on social media, it especially doesn't help that there's a new slur or wojack for them to use to terrorize. Social media platforms also contribute to the spread of these prejudice ideologies. Algorithms driven by engagement metrics often amplify content that aligns with controversial or sensational viewpoints. As a result, content that perpetuates racial stereotypes and beauty hierarchies gain visibility further embedding these prejudices in public consciousness. The echo chamber effect on social media also makes these issues worse, where individuals are exposed predominantly to viewpoints that reinforce their existing biases. In such an environment, extremist views regarding race and beauty gain traction, contributing to a broader acceptance of racially charged ideas and fostering a culture of discrimination. Young people are looking up ways to look smacks or how to get your crush to like you, which leads them to these spaces. The fear of socialization and self-improvement that this genre of content breeds leads people to never be comfortable with their genetic features or how their body looks. Every human's face is a mosaic of the generations before them, and then some loser can just hop on TikTok and post a supermodel and tell you to rope yourself and ruin your self-esteem in seconds. Dudes will tell you it's over if you're under six foot, but ignore their five foot eight dad and the millions of short men in Southeast Asia who do perfectly fine, which if anything proves my point that within the looks maxing community, any ridicule of unattractive features is always at the expense of people with those characteristics, especially racially or ethnically. The issue with beauty content and looks maxing is that it preys on the young and or insecure who have already been socialized to hate themselves or want to be people who look nothing like them in the pursuit of chasing validation and status. Addressing these issues also requires challenging both the pseudoscientific claims that underlie these beliefs and the societal pressures that reinforce them, which is difficult for a lot of people who have been socialized to these things or not knowledgeable about the harmful applications of these ideologies. The intertwining of race science, looks maxing, and the online incel culture has given rise to a troubling dynamic where pseudo-scientific notions and superficial beauty standards perpetuate discrimination and self-loathing. Self-care and finding ways to amplify your features or change up your look is great and mentally rewarding, but it's also crucial to recognize and address how certain aesthetic ideals perpetuate racial hierarchies and contribute to racist rhetoric. Looks maxing, while still about self-improvement and health, still has the ghosts of pseudoscience and racial supremacies haunting it. Hopefully this video can help someone out there get out of that pipeline and onto the pipeline of loving themselves.
if you got this far thank you for watching the video uh comment like subscribe uh let me know any thoughts or uh video ideas i have some stuff drafted it's just i make more ideas than uh i can edit so uh just let me know and uh thank you see you in the next vid bye